Have you ever wanted to serve on a jury? You just received a letter in the mail informing you that you have jury duty next month. However, instead of groaning about it, you're actually excited. Our next video will explain how to avoid jury duty, but today we'll discuss how to get picked for a jury. The first thing you need to know is that juries are picked by deselection rather than selection. What does that mean? It means that individual jurors are not actually picked to be on the jury. Instead, the people who end up on the jury panel are the leftovers that weren't challenged off the panel. Sounds like a real joy, right? At this stage, you're known as a veneer person because at this stage, you're sitting on the veneer panel. For a 12-person jury, it isn't uncommon to have at least 40 to 50 people on the veneer panel that will be whittled down to the final 12. The attorneys will be allowed to ask you questions at this stage. They are attempting to learn more about you as a citizen and to find out if you hold any personal views that might interfere with your ability to be fair and impartial. Basically, they're trying to see who holds a bias towards their client or towards the law that you'll have to apply. Well, if you're trying to get on a jury, then you do not want to be labeled as biased. For example, if you have a friend or family member that's a police officer, then you might believe that police officers are always truthful and you might give the testimony of a police officer extra credibility. Perhaps your trial is a family law matter, and perhaps you believe that young children should always live with their mother. If that's the case, then your views may be biased towards one side and against the other. There's nothing illegal about having a bias. It just means that this may not be the best one for you to sit on as a juror. If you have a bias for or against a police officer, then that wouldn't matter in a custody dispute where no police officer is expected to testify. The important thing to remember is that you must tell the truth, even if it reveals that you may have a bias, because hiding a bias simply to get on a jury could cause an unfair result for one side or the other. After all the questions have been asked to the veneer panel, the attorneys will identify veneer persons to the judge whom they believe have such a bias that would prevent them from serving as a fair and impartial juror. This is what's known as a challenge for cause. If you get called up to the bench to visit with the judge, it could be that you gave an answer that made you appear to be biased. This isn't the end of the world because it could have been an ambiguous question that you just didn't understand. At this point, the judge or one of the attorneys may attempt to rehabilitate you by asking more questions about whether your views are so strong that you're inclined toward one side or the other. If you cannot be rehabilitated, then the court must strike you from the panel. Even if you do everything right and aren't stricken for cause, you may still be excluded from the jury. In Texas, each side gets a certain number of peremptory challenges. This means that they can strike members from the panel without having to provide any justification whatsoever. So even if your answers during voir dire don't reveal any bias, you may not come across as a favorable jury to one side. As long as they don't use their peremptory challenge to exclude you because of your race, creed, religion, national origin, etc., then the challenge will stand. Whenever you arrive for jury duty, your seating will be randomly assigned. In Texas, your seating arrangement is actually important. The closer you sit to the front, the more likely you are to be seated on the actual jury panel. As I previously referenced, it's more about deselection than selection. Therefore, if no veneer members were stricken for cause and neither attorney used any of their peremptory challenge, then the first 12 veneer members will be seated on the jury panel. Every time I conduct Fort dire, the first thing that I explain to the veneer panel is the fastest way to get on a jury. The fastest way to get on a jury is to remain quiet because then the attorneys don't have any opportunity to uncover any bias. I also explain that the fastest way to get out of jury duty is to speak up and answer every question that applies to them. As you can imagine, I usually get a lot of participation after explaining that. Another secret to getting on a jury is to make sure you tell the attorney that you want to serve on the jury. Obviously, most people aren't that excited about sitting on a jury panel, 
and attorneys know that unhappy jurors are more likely to be critical of their case. Therefore, if the attorney is trying to decide whether to use a peremptory challenge on you or someone else, then they're more likely to strike someone that doesn't actually want to be there. If you found this video helpful, then you can help us grow by subscribing to our channel. If you know someone that has jury duty soon, then please share this video with them. Be sure to check out some of the other videos and don't miss our next video about how to avoid jury duty. From all of us here at Matthew Harris Lowell, we appreciate you watching.